So this is a 67-year-old Caucasian woman without any known risk for cancer, including cholangiocarcinoma, and was admitted with acute abdominal pain and nausea and vomiting. The imaging findings on the CT scan at the MRI of the abdomen showed a multiple intrahepatic lesions of undetermined nature and two small lesions in the lung left lower uh, lobe. Biopsy of the hepatic lesions revealed what's suggestive of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. So I'll start with Amid. What's cholangiocarcinoma? So when you think of liver cancer, there's actually um, you know, multiple types of liver cancer. As we've talked about for the first few cases, we focused on hepatocellular carcinoma, the most common type of primary liver cancer, which comes from the cells of the liver. Cholangiocarcinoma is the second most common primary liver cancer, and it comes from the, the actual bile ducts, typically, of the liver. Fair enough. And uh, uh, for she to help our friends uh, and our colleagues, how do you treat it? It's a stage four disease here, I understand. Uh, historically, uh, recurrent unresectable metastatic disease called angiocarcinoma, uh, we treat with systemic treatment uh, based on the ABC06 uh, trial, combination of cisplatin plus gemcitabine was superior. You mean ABC02? Yeah. 02, okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, uh -huh. Because they followed up with the second line full fox trial, uh, which showed the survival uh, over our uh, gemcitabine alone, and that's been for, for a long time our standard. Um, I think the field is, is moving. There is more molecular understanding of the biology of We'll come to that. But if anything, right. however, you still, this lady should get gemcitabine cisplatin. Uh, definitely. If Makes she's, sense. Uh, she has I totally agree. Her. I totally agree. Uh, let me, before we dissect a little bit further in regard to the other systemic therapies, Riyadh, let's assume there's no two small lung lesions over here. The disease is disease in the liver only one mass which is rather large, and there are some satellite lesions around. This is a classic scenario we see in trapezoid colonic carcinoma. Anything you can help with here from the uh, interventional yeah. radiology standpoint? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked because the, the reality is, and, and sort of I've been waiting for this case to talk about this a little bit more, which is I think, I think one of the things that uh, we're really lacking is sort of more um, prospective control trials actively combining the local and the systemic therapies. And, uh, and uh, this is true of HCC, this is true of, uh, of cholangiocarcinoma. So you're right, this is a very common scenario, that central lesion with sort of the scalloped anterior liver with a couple of lesions. The reality is if you pick a patient that has good liver function, um, uh, we have very few adverse events when you do a chemoembolization or radioembolization to that area. And nobody's suggesting that you would do that in isolation. What you would do, however, is hope to augment the results because at the end of the day, the results that you're quoting on ABC aren't, aren't that impressive. This is what you, this is what you mentioned, and there's, there, you know, there's level one data, I get it, but the survival is still 11 months or so. And so one of the nice things, I think, would be to try to combine these types of things in a more prospective manner. This is one of the fields, uh, uh, disease conditions, where it's completely lacking. Everything is still systemic in terms of, uh, of treatment options. So that's my bias as an interventional radiologist. But again, if you pick the right patient, you know you can control your adverse events. You're not going to deny anybody the standard of care, which is what I think you were, you were alluding to. Fair enough. I totally agree. So now, uh, already, uh, you know, Fashid was about to kind of discuss the biologic potential therapies. But let's talk a little bit about the biology of the disease itself. What do you know about that? So, I mean, cholangiocarcinoma is an aggressive tumor. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we know that liver cancer overall, both HEC and cholangio, have a relatively poor prognosis. This is a, you know, a disease where the five-year survival remains less than 20%. But I think when, when I think of HCC and I think of cholangio, I think of cholangio as actually being more aggressive even than HCC. These cancers are typically found at a late stage. Um, you know, we don't have um, an identifiable target population as much as HCC. There's really no screening recommendations per se. So these tumors are unfortunately, most of them are found advanced. Even when they are found early and you are able to resect them, there's a high recurrence risk and the survival isn't as, you know, it's just not as good as many other cancers that we see. Absolutely. And uh, Farshid, so uh, I do next generation sequencing on this patient. What usually are the things, if at all, that uh, you would like our colleagues to look for? I think the list is growing, but currently as of today, I think uh, IDH1 uh, mutations, FGFR2 uh, uh, alterations. I think for extra uh, biliary or extra liver disease, I would look for HER2 
uh, alterations. Like a gallbladder, for example. For gallbladder, uh, for example. And uh, there are subtypes such as BRAF, uh, V600E uh, mutated ones, where we have some data with combinations of MEK and RAF inhibitors. So these are the ones that at the minimum, but you know, if you send for next generation sequencing, you get obviously a much larger panel, MSI status, for example, as well, uh, for the very small proportion that might be MSI high. So let's dissect a little bit uh, this further. Uh, and let's start where, where, where you ended. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, MSI high, which is ultimately doesn't pertain only to collagen carcinoma, but to all diseases. But in MSI high, what does it mean? What do you treat with? And how common is it? So uh, microsatellite unstable uh, tumor, MSI high tumors have a higher rate of mutation. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, pembrolizumab was the first drug that was approved uh, independent of histology for all solid tumors that are MSI high in the second and subsequent line of treatment. Uh, the rate of MSI high depends on the site of disease. I think for, uh, for liver cancers in the single digits, uh, depending on what series you look for colorectal, it might be as high as 15, 20 uh, for early stage disease. But there is a much higher uh, probability of response and durable response with checkpoint inhibitors in MSI high populations. So uh, definitely it's, it's, it's worth testing the patients. Uh, because if they are MSI high, they would uh, significantly potentially benefit from a checkpoint inhibitor. Fair enough. And again, as Farshid said, however, this kind of population is rather limited. It will make less than 5% even. So it's not like something we're going to commonly see. But nonetheless, it's totally valid and legit to definitely check for SMI high, especially, of course, if the history, i.e. family history, especially might kind of, you know, suggest that or pertain to it. But however, I'm definitely more intrigued and... Uh, Admittedly, we are all heavily involved in regard to this work, but the IDH1, which if anything is a mutation that will actually make an alteration in regard to the ability to hydro to hydroxyglutarate, which kind of like is normal in all our Krebs cycle, but we kind of like bring in alpha ketoglutarate, which actually if anything is an oncogenic uh, uh, protein and as such can cause a unprecedented control, uh, uncontrolled growth of the tumors. And uh, lately we have a report that uh, uh, looked at ivozidinib, which is a anti-IDH1 uh, versus uh, placebo in second line setting with a crossover that allow patient on the placebo to go to the IDH1 showed actually an improvement in regard to progression free survival as well as in regard to overall survival and uh, definitely pretty robust data that at least will bring in a potential for the anti-IDH1 to come into play.